It is a gift, it is a calling. They will say what they hear. I gained 60 pounds. You can thrift a pair of jeans and a t-shirt or you can thrift a dress. I feel like no matter what I say right now, I will offend people. You asked and today I am answering some of your questions. Grab a cup of coffee, tea, whatever you like to sip, fold your laundry. This is gonna be very like podcast style. So let's get right into it. First one is a fun one. It says, how different is Canada from America? So if you're new here, I actually was born and raised in Canada and then moved to the States when we got married. Live in Pennsylvania now. And I'm sure it depends what part of Canada you're talking from as well as what part of America, but specifically comparing Manitoba, Canada to Pennsylvania, United States. Uh, there's a lot of differences, some kind of comical ones, such as people are a lot more friendly on the road in Canada. I remember, I don't know if this is still a thing or not, but I remember you would wave at every single person you passed on the road. In fact, when Josh came to visit when we were dating, he even talked about like how nice people are on the road. And um, I love that about Canada. I feel like probably the biggest is just like the landscape. There's all the rolling hills here, fields. It, it's I love Pennsylvania for the scenery. It's absolutely stunning. Manitoba was also stunning, but very different. So everything is flat. All of our roads were in perfect squares. And so I got to this day, cannot for the life of me figure out directions around here. All the hills, curves, turns, three ways to get to the same place, all of that. I'm just like, just give me a GPS and I will get there. <laughs> what are your side hustles? You've mentioned events, baking for people, etc. Just love your channel. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd probably confuse you. I only do YouTube and growing flowers as side hustles. I do bake for a friend once a week and I will occasionally do flowers for events, but much as I love like flower arranging and all of that, in this stage of life, it's not something that I want to get into. What inspired you to start a YouTube channel and what keeps you going? Love your content. Thank you. So what inspired me to get started? I was very lonely, so definitely just a place to connect with people was a big part of it but I think when it came down to it I was too scared to start until the verse let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven kept playing through my mind over and over and would not let me go so it was kind of a mix between a way of witnessing but also to find community and what keeps me going those two things when I get messages of people saying they're family life changed around because they watched my videos. I had somebody say their marriage completely turned around after she watched our wife chat. There's things like that that just that make it all worth it to me. That's definitely the number one reason why I keep doing what I'm doing. And then aside from that, just I'm passionate about it. I love filming and editing and being creative that way. The community has been gold. I love friendships that I have made online, and then sometimes they actually transfer into real life friendships, which is always such a gift. Tips for having a natural birth. So I would like to preface this question by saying, whether you gave birth vaginally, C-section, with an epidural, water birth, completely natural, whatever it was, you are a mom. And I wish there wasn't quite so much stigma around this. While I love natural birth, I don't think it's the only way to go or the best way to go for every single situation. I've had all four of our kids vaginally with no pain meds. I was induced with a first, so I had Pitocin, so maybe that's not considered completely natural. And I think what has helped me the most, honestly, um, birthing classes we took with our first, and I think that was super helpful. But then just like, learn about what's actually happening. So like research, like when you feel this pain, what's actually happening in your body, and then when you can picture that, in your mind as you're going through it, it really helps to realize that this pain is not in vain. Like this is where my baby's head is right now. This is why this is happening. It's when it gets really hard, like you're at that complete giving up point, you're probably in transition and the baby is literally about to pop out. So that has been super helpful for me, just one contraction at a time and knowing that 
all across the world, women are giving birth right now. Same as you, you are not alone. You were created to do this. I love being pretty mobile through my labors. So going for a little walk. I remember with Kyra, I even did like jumping jacks. I <laughs> clearly not in transition, but it was, it was pretty comical. And also just watching birth stories that like positive, natural birth stories. Anyway, that's getting kind of long-winded, but those are some things that definitely have been helpful for me. What is your opinion on deciding being done having kids versus having as many as the Lord wills, AKA how the Duggars do it? Ooh, this is a spicy one. I feel like no matter what I say right now, I will offend people, but I'm just gonna say my view on it. So I, first of all, believe children are such a blessing. They are a gift from God. I think this can actually vary from family to family. I think this should be something between you, your husband, and the Lord. Something that you pray about, talk about, and seek his will. Because I think some couples, he does lay it on their hearts to just completely lay that down, not do any form of family planning, and he will give them the grace and the strength for that. Do I think that's for everyone? No, I don't think he calls everyone to do that. I am all for natural family planning. I am, do have strong convictions against birth control pills, um, but there's other ways to do it. So. Do you follow a Bible plan for your family or just following your own way? So I actually brought up with me a couple devotionals. If you've been here a while, you're probably rolling your eyes right now because I'm talking about this again. But um, Diane Stortz, if you have young kids, these are the devotionals I would recommend. You can just get them on Amazon, beautifully illustrated as you can see. They have stories very true to the Bible. It's not veggie tale versions. Right now, and somebody <laughs> stuck a sticker on here, there we go. Right now we are going through these hero tales. These are basically stories of like heroes of the faith and character qualities that they had. So uh, this has been a really fun one for the kids. There are pictures of each one at the beginning of like when you learn about them. Otherwise this one doesn't have so many pictures. But it's just been a really, really good book that the kids at this age have really been into. And then at the end, it will have a Bible verse that goes with the character quality and then also some questions to ask the kids. So that's been a really good resource. That's what we're doing right now. We kind of go through different things in different seasons as we get through books, through courses, things like that. But. Those are a couple of our favorites right now. Help with quick and healthy nutritious meals. Kiddo friendly, no sourdough. So I was actually thinking of this the other day. I post a lot of sourdough stuff, don't I? I will try to do a little better with including some recipes that are not sourdough, although if they involve dough, a lot of the time that is just actually how we eat is that it will be sourdough, but you don't have to have bread with every meal. I think my biggest tip would just be pick a protein and a vegetable for each meal and make that the base of each meal and then go from there. I feel like those are kind of the two hardest. It's so easy to like throw in a side or carbs, that kind of thing, but if you just pick a protein and a vegetable for each meal, works wonders. Start with vegetables that you already know that your kids like, prepare them in a way that they can eat well, and then quick and easy, Pinterest is probably your best friend. Look for one pot dinners, look for healthy one pot dinners. How do you always have so much energy? You seem so motivated and happy, thank you. First of all, I don't always have a lot of energy and I'm not always happy, but I do truly love what I do. I feel like it is a gift, it is a calling, this is my purpose and I want to do my absolute best. I've always been one who is very strong-willed and even competitive and so like if I am called to be a homemaker, a wife and a mom in this season, I want to pour my heart and soul into this and be the absolute best that I can be. I think of that verse often that says, there's no greater joy than to know that my children are walking in truth. And so I think of that almost daily of like, what can I do today to point them to the Lord, to pour into them and just a lot of that very countercultural laying yourself down and serving others. As far as practically energy, your diet plays a huge role. Diet and exercise. I, in my life, have <laughs> proven that 
so many times. Those two things give me so much energy and a complete different outlook on life because I feel so much better. Do you use homemade cleaning pot products or store-bought? So for a lot of things, I just like to use water and vinegar. Um, but I do have a couple things from Grove still that I am working on using up. How do you wear such pretty dresses every day without staining and ruining them? So that's a pretty frequent question, it seems. The truth is, like, you're buying clothes anyway, right? You can thrift a pair of jeans and a t-shirt or you can thrift a dress. And so by wearing a dress, you're not necessarily spending a lot more money on it. But practically, I mean, if you wear an apron, it helps to keep your dress clean. Another thing to look for when you're out shopping for dresses is if you wanna wear them for every day, things that are, have darker fabrics or fabrics with prints really help hide stains and um, dirt. Do your kids ever argue with each other? They seem well behaved. Thank you. I think this goes without saying. Of course our kids argue. Of course Josh and I have disagreements. Of we, We're just people. <laughs> we live very normal lives. I'm choosing to protect for my kids. That's why you never see that. But much as our kids love spending time with each other, of course they will argue and we have things to work out sometimes. Netflix movie recommendations. We don't have Netflix. <laughs> we are not a completely screen-free family, but if there's anything we wanna watch, it's usually on Amazon Prime Video or Redeem TV has some good ones or sometimes just on YouTube. Some of our favorite like series have been James Harriet. We used to love the one of the baking championship shows, but there's a lot of bad language. With young kids, it's something you wanna watch. They will say what they hear. So that's something that we have kind of eliminated since then. Currently, they love the Australia Zoo series. Crikey, I think it's called. Anyway, so we're pretty low-key when it comes to videos. I think it does them so good mentally and relationally to not be in front of the screen all the time. How do you do your hair and makeup? Just actually covered this in my morning routine, I think, video. Tips on meal planning, healthy foods, thoughts on weight loss for postpartum, feeling stuck. Oh, I'm so sorry, I feel you. So with my last pregnancy, I gained 60 pounds, which is definitely the most. I was really sick through the entire thing, felt awful, couldn't really move off the couch for nine months. So I definitely felt that probably at its heaviest then, but I would say just be easy on yourself. Give yourself grace. It took nine months to grow this baby. So at least give yourself grace for nine months before getting too intense on anything. I would say for myself, like just some easy things that you can do even early postpartum is focusing on a lot of protein and lessening carbs. I'm not saying no carbs, but focusing on protein first, which first of all is good for your milk supply, but then also it is helpful in getting rid of unwanted weight. And then as I know this is controversial, so I am not recommending it, I started intermittent fasting maybe four to six months postpartum. Again, I am not recommending this because I know like some people lose their milk supply, some people, like there's all the things, right? For myself, and I talked to my doctor about it, that was a really good option. And through, like even between pregnancies, I feel like that's the biggest thing. I also would work out, which again, I think it's so important to be active for so many aspects of your health, but um, intermittent fasting and even just light working out once your body is ready, I think is really helpful. How did you encourage yourself when you were first trimester and dealing with morning sickness? It was hard. So with my last pregnancy, it just messes with your head when you literally feel like you're on the worst stomach flu of your life, literally writhing around on the couch, not knowing what to do with yourself for months on end. It really just like grace for each day. I remember just sobbing and Josh was like, babe, just take it one day at a time. Like we'll get through this. And I told him, I was like, I can't. Literally one day is too much to me, for me to think of right now. Like it has to be second by second uh, because that's, I can't like, 
I just can't. And that's when God can, right? He carried me through that time, but it was definite. I had developed PTSD from it. And anyway, it was, it was a rough, a rough time. But maybe we should rather talk about things that I've heard help others with morning sickness who maybe don't get it quite as severe as I do. And some of those things are vitamin B6 every eight hours. Uh, that can be really helpful eating high protein, cutting back sugar, um, drinking lots of water, taking naps as needed. I know a lot of people like the ginger chews, nausea bands, getting fresh air can be really helpful. Oh, there's another supplement, Nux Vomica, I think is what it's called, that can be also helpful anyways. So there's a lot of things, and I feel like I'm always a little bit hesitant talking about this because I feel like I'm just not encouraging because I've had such a rough time with this. I know maybe one person who has morning sickness as bad as I do, so please don't be discouraged if you're thinking of getting pregnant. You're very likely not to go through what I do in my pregnancies. What are your kids usually doing when you're filming? It depends a lot on what type of video it is that I'm filming. Josh's parents like to have all the grandkids over one day a week, one afternoon a week, I should say. So if I'm doing like a sit down style video, that is when I try to film those when they are away anyway. Aside from that, I try to create my content around my life. So it's not like I have my life to do here and then I have filming to do here. It kind of just meshes, meshes together. So a lot of the time they're actually right around there. They're just not always in the frame. Sometimes I will start filming and somebody's having a bad day. I will stop filming and start again a different day. It just depends, but normally they are around or for a sit down video. It's usually on a day when they're having grandkids day anyway. As a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> That's a good question. So I had a couple different dreams. I always knew I wanted to be a mom and I always wanted to get married young which is kind of funny and I did get married young I was 20 when we got married one of my dreams as a kid was to work in an orphanage in Jamaica I don't know why I specifically had Jamaica in my mind but that's where I wanted to be had I gone to college I always wanted to be an actress so those are kind of my three things I wanted to work in an orphanage or I wanted to be an actress and I definitely at some point wanted to be a wife and mom how do you help your children develop a good attitude toward daily tasks teach them that work is fun like you can have the best time folding laundry or playing music while you're washing the dishes or things like that I think they really watch our attitude and if our chores for us are a drag then it teaches them that they should be a drag if we do it joyfully maybe while singing maybe while having a crazy dance session maybe while whatever it teaches them to also do the same do you grow eucalyptus or have any tips on it? Yeah, so I actually have started eucalyptus from seeds a few years. The biggest thing is start it early. It can take up to, I think, a month to germinate and then grows fairly slowly. So you wanna start it for us like in January or February in order to have it for that year. How do you manage wanting time alone as a busy wife and mother? So many of these questions I, I think are a little different for us because of our lifestyle of living here on the farm. So Josh takes the kids to the barn every evening for like an hour and a half. And I feel like that's my, I say me time, it's when I clean up the house and make supper, but it's my quiet time. The kids, every single one of them, when they turn like two years old, I become very unpopular right around four o'clock when they start heading for the barn and everybody just wants to go out there. They have a swing out there, they have some riding toys. The older kids are suddenly really into learning how to milk the cows. They feed the um, baby cabs their bottles and stuff so it's something that they really enjoy they ride their bikes around so I feel like I'm very blessed in that area as far as I get that little bit of peace and quiet every day tips for single women that are following God and actually enjoying it keep it up <laughs> that's wonderful what does your homeschool day look like oh guys I feel like I have filled you in this I for a year have been telling you, homeschool video coming soon. Did it happen? Almost, I actually had it filmed, but something went wrong with it. I forget what it was. So I am planning to, maybe even today, sit down and film our homeschool curriculum for next year well, where I'll talk more about all the different things that we like to use. I think that will go live 
on a Thursday, hopefully here in the next two weeks. I'm thinking a Thursday because I'm not sure, like it seems like a pretty niche um, subject. I'm not sure how many of you actually are interested in, but we'll dive into it a little deeper then. We like to do it first thing in the morning um, and be done by noon just as a brief like our homeschool day. Do you have any recipe books for healthy food? So Pinterest is my best friend when it comes to that. Or another thing that I do is I'll just get a normal recipe and tweak it. That's actually probably what I do the most. But I do have this recipe book. This is called Restorative Traditions, Dr. Ashley Turner, who actually is local to me, but it, it's a beautiful book. She has really pretty pictures in here and just lots of different recipes as well. How did you prepare body, mind, and spirit when starting a family? My husband and I just got married, congratulations. So we are now in the starting a family phase and I really want to have a healthy mindset and body anytime, but especially during this season, thank you. I think we can overthink this, honestly. I think we should do our absolute best nourishing our bodies and actually this can be really helpful generally they say like the better shape your body is the less likely you will be to have like morning sickness certain complications in pregnancy and things like that so absolutely nourish yourself to the best to your ability but then also just realize you'll never be ready like there will always be areas to grow and things don't have to be perfectly lined out and figured out before you can start trying for a baby how long did you and your husband wait until you had your first baby how do you manage holidays with your family since having children so we actually <laughs> <laughs> I think originally we thought we'd maybe wait a year or two. We actually ended up getting pregnant six months after getting married. And then how do you manage holidays with family since you're having children? My favorite tip for this is just simple traditions. That's been some of our favorite things. Sleeping around the Christmas tree the night before Christmas putting together a resurrection garden the week or two before Easter. Just little things that can be simple that the kids look forward to are not expensive and just fun way to keep the holidays exciting. I really try to stay away from a lot of emphasis on the gifts. While of course we do gifts around Christmas, um, we do some Easter eggs around Easter that should never be the focus of these holidays and so just the simple joys um, for the children and trying in a lot of these activities to bring the true meaning of these holidays into it um, has been so fun i mean have you even enjoyed a holiday if you haven't seen it through the eyes of a child <laughs> it's honestly the the most magical thing specifically about intermittent fasting and your eating lifestyle and exercise do you find you're exhausted the next day if you have sugar been intermittent fasting for a couple months and noticed my bloating went down significantly. Yes, yeah, so I think it does make a difference, especially if I have a lot of carbs the day before. I don't know if I'd say a huge difference, but I do notice, especially if like my last meal of the day has been heavily like carbs and sugar, I will feel it some the next day. I don't know if I'd consider it exhausted, but maybe just a few notches less energy. <laughs> How did you learn to garden? Did you take courses to learn? Thank you. Ah, uh, no, I actually, my mom grew up making beautiful gardens. I remember back then it was a little bit more of a drag for me. I didn't like weeding, but I do have good memories of helping mom clean up vegetables from the garden, and that's definitely where the bulk of how I learned. What does the timeline of your day look like, and how do you stay on task with YouTube, etc.? We started a YouTube channel, congratulations, and I feel like it's all or nothing. Either I'm working on YouTube all the time, or I have to ignore it completely and get things done around the house. I had quite a few questions surrounding the whole YouTube thing, if I film my own videos, if I know there was some more, just a lot of questions on how I manage YouTube and motherhood and all of that. If I have to categorize YouTube and motherhood, motherhood always is more important to me. So like I said earlier, there's days when I sit down to film and somebody has a meltdown, somebody needs mommy snuggles, and I will lay down the camera and go and be with that child because that it will always be more important to me. When you study YouTube and learn from the professionals and all of that, they will very much encourage you to niche down, like very niche down. And I just felt like, hey, well, if I'm gonna grow, if I'm gonna, if this is gonna turn into anything, I have to niche down. And 
I just spent so much time worrying about what that should be because I was afraid that if I did one thing, like I'd get bored of it and then what? And um, I remember I had even already filmed an announcement saying that my channel would be switching to cooking videos. That's all I would share would be cooking videos. Then I had it filmed and I was like, goodness, but really, like do I actually only want to do cooking videos? And what if I get tired of it? Plus, cooking videos was the way I was doing them was one where the kids needed to be out of the kitchen and I needed to have all this time and it was draining. Anyway, all that to say, I think the key for me was making YouTube fit around my lifestyle versus making my lifestyle fit around YouTube. So I started to just, you know, homemaking, what you're seeing today, things that I'm doing anyhow, take the camera with me and while I might not be growing as fast as I might have had I done it so much more niche down, I love it now and it's my life and I think I would have burned out pretty soon had I niche down. I just, I kind of get bored if I do the same exact thing for too long. So I feel like that kind of answers the question specifically around filming. I do have help editing, which is a huge help. It hasn't always been that way, but recently it is more, which so much cuts down. Like I'll usually do a couple little touches at the end, but it really, really helps me. I always was big on not editing when my kids were awake, so either I would edit when they're at the barn in the evenings, or I would edit at night after they went to bed. I've already stayed up and edited till like 2 a.m. before just to finish a video, but I hope that kind of answers the question. Film in a way that you can do it while still being very present as a mom, and if it feels like you have to only YouTube or only look after your home and your family, always pick your home and your family. YouTube can happen later once they're from the home. Um, but I also think, like from my experience, if you really think it through, pray it through, and be really disciplined in your own time, like I'm not spending that time then scrolling my Instagram or whatever. I'm focused in on like these things need to happen if I will later, once they're at the barn, have the leeway to film or however that works. We have so many more questions, but I think I've taken up enough of your time. I, If you're still here, kudos to you. I hope that this was helpful to you. Thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye friends. Golden, golden thing.